Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2 and today as requested we are going to be realistically terraforming Pluto. So this is actually going to be easier than most of our other uh, terraforming <laughs> videos because Pluto has a very nice and um, well Pluto already has a little bit of ice on it. And Charon is right here ready to be collided into Pluto to heat it up and give it an atmosphere. So we're basically just going to go ahead and do that. Um, of course, the one unrealistic part is getting the amount of power and thrust needed to deorbit an object as big as Charon. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. That's, that's fine. But we're just going to begin to cut the velocity on Charon. And you'll see very quickly that this causes it to go towards Pluto. And we'll see what happens when they collide. And here we are. And we have collision. As we can see, Charn is basically ramming straight into Pluto. It's not at a extremely high speed, but the size of Charon compared to Pluto is sure to leave a bit of damage. Okay, so it looks like we saw some water there for a second before Pluto kind of glitched out there and flew away. Um, what's our temperature looking like? Negative 58 degrees. So that by any means isn't amazing, but we can fix that. It's much better than it was before, and it looks like all the water is actually being blown off through solar wind and other things. Um, how much is left? None. It has lost actually all of it. Good job, Pluto. <laughs> well, you're going to need a little bit more mass than that, aren't you? Okay, so... How are we going to make this work then? Pluto's losing everything it's got due to just the lack of gravity on Pluto is troubling for our purposes. And we can see it's still shooting out all of the materials that we added, which is a bummer. It's going to make it slightly challenging to do what we're trying to do. Um, we need to increase its mass, which means probably deorbiting all of the objects around it um would be a good start to do that so if we can if we're allowed to deorbit Charon without it being against the rules we'll just do all of them even though this isn't really going to do much because these are so ridiculously tiny it's still a start it's better than nothing hail hydra <laughs> and nix let's just bop that down to like 10 meters per second something insanely slow and bop it looks like Pluto is doing just fine um, not really Hydra just flung itself really far away and Pluto pretty much the same I didn't expect any difference really but it was just a start hey it's the berry center Okay, so now we have a serious problem. We need to increase the mass of Pluto, and to do this, we are basically going to have to cheat. Yeah, this this is a part of it that there's no way we're going to pull off as it is. Um, we need to get that water from Sharon back, so we'll just set it to like 10% because it's going to lose it, and maybe it won't lose it. Once it becomes solid though, if we give it its heat back, it is going to lose it, and pretty quickly too. Uh, yeah, it's already lost all of it. So it needs a bit more mass, so let's give it a little bit of mass. And we need to give it a lot of mass, so to maintain being at least semi-realistic, we'll do this without using the uh, little button there. We will actually collide things with it. And we will use Europa because Europa has water, so that's a good idea. Europa is actually bigger than Pluto. Well, maybe we have to increase Pluto's size a little bit before doing that. It's okay, Pluto won't mind. 
Now we do have to keep an eye on Pluto's orbit because if we get a little bit too ridiculous here, uh, it, its orbit is it's moving so slowly that even a very small change is going to have a huge effect on its orbit. Um, but we'll keep that in mind so that we don't accidentally destroy Pluto completely. And let's go. <laughs> well, bye Europa. Nice knowing you. There we go. Oh, geez. That looked like it was going to hit, but it didn't. Because of the speed of Pluto moving, we're going to have to do this with the launch tool. And Europa. There we go. Bam. Pluto, I'm sorry. Whoa, Europa actually survived that. <laughs> that was not to be expected. And Pluto is going to get a lot of mass through these collisions. Let's go, Pluto. <laughs> We're going to give you... Of course, out of our realistically terraforming series, this is now the least realistic one because of we're just kind of spawning in giant objects. But, you know, we're, we're doing it the most realistic way possible in the game. So, we're trying at least. So, Pluto is gaining a bit of mass. And as we can see, it's actually quite large now. It's... Oh, it's 14 times the size of the moon, which, if we put that in terms of Earth, that's uh, one-fifth the size of Earth, pretty much. So, Pluto is almost good when it comes to size. It's almost where we want it to be. Uh, one thing that may have been messed up by all of those collisions is its orbit. <laughs> uh, that definitely had an effect on its speed yeah it went from five kilometers per second to 75 kilometers per second so we have no clue where it's heading now we'll keep an eye on that <laughs> and um well i'm assuming it's just getting rid of all of its water again wow it actually stabilized with some water so we have successfully done that good job to us probably too much water that's a lot of water and once it goes under 100 degrees, it'll allow some of that water to condense. Or earlier, because some parts of the planet aren't, aren't the average. And then there we go. Water on Pluto. Good job. Good job, us. We're just going to cut down on the water a little bit. There we go, that works, I think. Uh, that doesn't look very good. Oh, that is way too little. Okay, that works. That works for me, that looks good. There's some oceans. Um, good job, Pluto, you don't look too bad. Now what we're going to do is we are going to mess with Pluto a little bit. We're going to look into atmosphere. Now, during collisions, atmosphere is not calculated by the game, so we have to do this manually. Um, so let's pop over to, well, our similarity is 67.8%. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's quite impressive considering we haven't done much to it yet. Uh, magnetosphere, we should probably give it. Can we please, can we please see the magnetosphere? Ah, there we go. I guess that's radius that it's being measured in. So now we have a magnetosphere protecting Pluto, which could have been done through the Europas hitting it and giving it a molten core. <laughs> and now our goal is going to be to give it an atmosphere so that it doesn't get super cold but we also have another problem so let's quickly click on Pluto and let's fix its orbit if we auto orbit it boop that should fix what we've done yeah there we go all better um Pluto's in a really dangerous area with all these asteroids and stuff but it, it should be fine Pluto 
You're going to be okay. It's all going to be fine. So now to finish this, oh, you have got to be kidding me. You, you have, you have, come on. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> continuing. <sighs> Probably should have turned off steam. Continuing, we just have to jump down the atmosphere and give it, we'll give it one atmosphere to start. And let's see how this affects Pluto. Oh, it's a very dark and ugly atmosphere, but I guess it's an atmosphere nonetheless. What temperatures can we hit? It looks like the temperature is just rapidly dropping. What if we turn the albedo on zero? Wow. Hold it all in. Hold all of the temperature in. But that's still going to have it drop, so... You see, a high albedo will keep in the heat more, but it'll also make it harder for more heat to come in. So, just going to pop that on zero so that we can collect heat. And we're going to jump our atmosphere pressure up to, I think we'll pump it up to two atmospheres. Still dropping. Five atmospheres. Still dropping. 20 atmospheres, dropping even faster. 50 atmospheres. <laughs> yeah, at this point you would be crushed. Well, that, is that a strong enough atmosphere to hold in the heat? At least for years. So if so, then I think we can call this a semi-win. Nope, we are not holding in the heat nearly enough. Okay, so how are we going to fix this issue? Why is the entire solar system, like, broken? Oh, maybe it isn't. I don't know what's going on over there. I'm going to ignore that. Um. So, Pluto, interesting. We need to get your atmosphere... Uh, back into a normal size Because this is just ridiculous and we're going to make you closer to the Sun So cheat number two Pluto's just too far out Too far out to keep warm for extensive periods of time as you can see it's f oceans have already frozen over um, We did have a nice Pluto terraformed for about like a few days until uh, radiation caused it to lose all oh jeez Pluto why are you moving everything else along with you why is everything attached to Pluto Pluto what the heck what the heck Pluto okay I guess we can't do that well this is quite interesting isn't it um Pluto can I Okay, we're just, <laughs> this is quite interesting. Never had that problem before. It's fine, we'll just open the solar system and find somewhere where Pluto will be fine. So how far would we have to move Pluto? Uh, the amount of energy it would take to move this Pluto would be absolutely ridiculous. And this is getting less and less realistic as we go on, but that's kind of how it works. <laughs> It's never going to be perfect. Um, let's move it a bit further out than Mars. Thankfully, unlike the other planets, moving Pluto won't have much of an effect on anything because it's so small. So we don't have to worry as much about like ruining the entire solar system. So what's our temperature at? Negative 38.1. Now if we turn down on Bido... Oh, look at that. It's actually going to work. Whoa, with three atmospheres. So this isn't actually completely murderously hot. I mean, not hot. Like, um, what would the word for that be? Crushing. This will not crush you. And Pluto is now livable. Wow. Good job, Pluto. We're proud of you. You have a magnetosphere. Water. 
everything is all set. You're slightly further away than Mars. But let's go one step further. Heck, let's just completely ruin the realistic part of this. And you know what would be really convenient? If Pluto orbited Earth. Because then we could just, like, send, send like, little rockets up. And uh, we wouldn't even have to send them very far. So let's move Pluto in real close to Earth. And let's get rid of, like, all of its velocity. And then let's auto-orbit it. Mm, is this orbiting Earth? I don't think this is orbiting Earth. Oh, it is. So now look at that. Pluto, we have to fix some things because now it's way too hot. But now we can just send rockets up to Pluto to send people to it. And it's right here. And how convenient. Okay, way too hot. We need to bump this down to one atmosphere, which would make people happier anyways. They wouldn't be crushed by the atmosphere above them. And what's it looking like? We have to bump this a little bit higher. All the way? Jeez, this is really worrying how... Yeah, this is too far. This is... Oh... Okay, I think we've got it stable. Kind of stable. It fluctuates a little bit. There we go. That's that is livable kind of. Nope, now it's now it is going to freeze. Needs to be more in this direction. This is so touchy. If you touch it just a tiny bit, it like goes flying. Okay, now it's now it's stable around 7 I guess I guess that's good. That'll work. Slightly cold, but it works. And look at that. Pluto. Completely happy Pluto. Um about <laughs> half the temperature of Earth. Uh but it's much better than it used to be. And it's it is livable. Although what is this? Okay, it's actually, it's kind of, it's losing that temperature real quick. But, oh, jeez, this is so hard to do. So now we're 30 to 40. Now we're 30. Still way too hot. Now if we bump this to 8-1... 20 20 ish okay now if we bump this to 8 3 earth earth temperature ish but now it's now it's oh no it's collapsing so 8 2 8 2 may be what we need to keep it at yep point eight two. that's going to do it that's going to give us a perfect temperature for pluto while orbiting earth now we have double tides, and guess what? We also have somewhere to send people to for vacation. Very close to the Earth, too. This will cast shadow, giving everyone beautiful eclipses every single day. Well, guys, thank you for watching this not-so-realistic terraforming video. And uh, if you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Pluto, aren't you so very happy now? Aren't you so very happy? No? Okay. Well, good for you.